All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Survivor Yukon Radio Rumble live show. Um, we got some great stuff to go over today. Uh, great episode. Um, bit of a, what you call maybe predictable boots, but I think there's some uh, good content to take out of it. And it was still a really fun episode to watch. Um, but first of all, I'd like to introduce everyone here. Um, you guys can all introduce th themselves. We'll start with me, and then we'll go uh, counterclockwise just to uh, get Ethan in there. And we, because Ethan's here every week. But uh, <laughs> I'm Ryan. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Ryan. Ryan. I am the host of Survivor Yukon. Uh, I was in the episode, and that's me. Excited for a night. I am Ethan. I am an aspiring makeup artist, and um, I am always here. And you guys are probably sick of me, but I'm not going anywhere. So I'm looking forward to another another one of these and keeping them rolling because this is so much fun. Cool beans. Hi, y'all. I'm Andrew Carlson from Survivor Northeastern, a former player and former host. I'm super stoked to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Pleasure. Pleasure's all ours. And by that, <laughs> say, I'm Eric. I uh, was on season one. Uh, my Chiron is the moose. It's, I'm one and only. Can't can't beat that. So it's, it's fun times. Hell yeah. All right. Glad you're here, moose. And it looks like uh, Edge is in the chat. Shout out to Edge. What's up, Edge? Um, Happy belated yes. birthday to Edge. Um, Ooh, gone too so soon. Too far. There we go. I don't care, Edge. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so we've a great episode for you guys tonight. Um, Kira will be here um, at a certain point, so we'll talk to Kira a little about her time in the game. And uh, But for now, um, we'll get right into this week's episode, and let's chat a little about that. So let me pull my notes up here real quick. All right. Um, and someone tell me if Kira pops in at the bottom, because it's really small for me when I have my notes up. Uh, actually, no, you can't see that because I'm the moderator. Yeah, All sure. right, I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, so start off the episode, and um, we're just looking at the results of last week's blind side. So Bijan's telling us about how uh, Kira was talking to him, like, oh, I'm worried about the challenge tonight and blah, blah, blah. And Bijan's like, don't even worry about the results, Kira. You ain't going to be here. <laughs> and uh, great moment. Bijan uh, knows that it's a one and done for her. Oh. And I think she's here right now, so why don't we do that first? So um, let, let's do our interview with Kira. So without further ado, here is Kira. Ooh, what is hey. up? Kira, hello. Let's you guys can hear me. Yeah. We can hear you, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, you were in, like the, like, the outside room. I have to add you to the stream. So you're live on the stream right now. Nice. Awesome. We are. Okay, so Kira... <laughs> Good to see you, Kira, and happy birthday. I know it was your birthday yesterday. Hey. <laughs> happy belated. Thanks. Um, so, Kira, I just wanted to talk to you a little about your time in the game. So, obviously, um, last week's episode was kind of the uh, beginning of the end for you. So, it, it was your first tribal and your last tribal. So, how, how was that? experience for you or how was the survivor experience for you just briefly tell me tell me a little about your time in the game um well the first thing i say is i definitely have ptsd from tribals uh, <laughs> <laughs> never want to do that again um but i mean i'd say overall i i loved being on the show what like i used to watch survivor when i was younger well not younger but like when i was in middle school i would watch it and i just wanted to be in the game playing the games the entire time it's sort of just like i'm a fan of the just like the challenges and everything like that um and i thought it was a really great experience it was definitely something that i never thought i was going to be doing and during college absolutely so we see you go out last week it was a uh, five three two your side split the vote and unfortunately, you guys didn't have the numbers you thought to make that split vote happen. You also ended up going home with a tribal skip, which do you think you should have used that that round? Or do you think like, yeah, I mean, that that likely would have screwed your numbers in the future, though. But do you think that was worth it? Or do you think you should have 
uh, concocted some other plan, put all the votes on Carolina. What, what was what should have been the the main difference? You think? Well, definitely, we should have put all our votes on Carolina. Um, it was just like a little bit, you know, we were. It was positive thinking that we were going to get everyone to be on our side. You know, it was not really focused, I guess, on the fact that oh, other people could be talking to each other. You know, which is, you know, it's <laughs> stupid. Like looking back now. Um, and definitely would have put five votes on Carolina in order for me to keep the, with everything that I knew at that point, it would have been, it should have been five, at least five V five or was it? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was five V five. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we would have gone to rocks at least and we, I would have kept people in my alliance at the same time. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was the right thing for you to not use your, your safety without power in that round because then your side is screwed because they're down 5-4. Um, and then you come into it screwed going forward. And you've now pissed off your alliance and you're a target for the other side as well. So it was a yeah, shitty I mean, situation. It really is. Yeah. It's like, right. <laughs> it buys you maybe one one right. round at the most. And even then, like you're just sort of out, out of the water. And you're, yeah, no, it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'd say too, like having that in the future could have been a nice surprise, especially if like I knew if one of my, someone had flipped and I had to, like I need to, I needed to use it. That would have been really great, especially knowing now. Um, I'm not sure if it was now, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, up in, we're, just, we're just up until the Robbie vote. So Robbie's okay. gone home. So that, I was we're say, not going to talk was, me on that. Who was the main like leader in trying to like, tell everyone like we need to split votes on that was definitely robbie yeah that that makes yeah. sense <laughs> <laughs> trying to overthink <laughs> things of, like yeah right like obviously the entire game he was overthinking you know trying to get me to trust him by like not trusting me at the same time <laughs> just <laughs> the whole thing was just weird <laughs> like yeah they yeah i want i wanted to ask you Kira. so this is something you didn't find out until like a month or two after that, uh, your 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 idol was fake the whole time. The one you ended up giving to Kiwan, because um, you you were pre jury, so we never got that uh, like, um, you never got that directly from Robbie till the end of the game. So what what do you what do you think of all that? Do you think it was completely stupid by Robbie to do that to you as the ally? Do you, do you think because I think personally, um. If you knew Robbie has an idol, I mean, you're in a pretty good spot. If he plays the idol on you, Carolina gets idled out, and then you have this tribal skip. Your game's completely changed. But what do you think about uh, this whole fake idol shenanigans? I mean, in terms of the fake idol, I can see why he did it, especially, like, you know, if he really considered me the biggest threat. or Because he said, um, you know, eventually he wanted, like, obviously he wasn't, we weren't planning on going all the way through the game. So in the long run, if things had worked out, it could have been, you know, if Kinoan had never used Idol, which he didn't, so I still didn't know. Um, <laughs> if had used the Idol, I would have found out that time that it was fake, and that would have actually been perfect for me, because then I would have convinced everyone to vote Robbie out. Well, actually, no, because he would have had the Idol, so we would have tried to split the vote on him, is sort of what well, I would do from that point. What was your reaction in the moment when Robbie brings out an idol at Tribal and I mean, you had no idea he had one? I was already like, uh, I I didn't know what was going I was like, oh my, like, <laughs> very just confused and in the moment, like, you know, I, I was, I was kind of speechless at that point. Um, Cause it just was weird. And he didn't play it on me either. Like, and I also did not know that Matt, um, I'm not sure. Mm, I might have been missing yeah. that part of the episode. Um, yeah, Matt. Matt knew about it. I believe that was uh, in like one of the past episodes. It, yeah, it confused me too why Matt knew about it and you didn't. I think I think it was because we'll talk to Robbie next week. Obviously, I think it was. I think at that point, Robbie wanted to tell people, but he was in such a hole with you. <laughs> he was like, I can't tell her. She thinks she has the idol, but um, right. Yeah. If he had told me, you know, I would never have trusted him after that. So. I 
see why he didn't tell me after that point. But, but, but it's just like, why did he give you the fake in the first place? Why didn't he just let you know he had the idol? <laughs> I, I just love how Robbie like definitely came into the game being like, I want to play as super hard, despite yeah. saying, oh, I gotta, I gotta play it like not too hard, but like inside <laughs> his mind was just like, I need this, I need this, let's go crazy. <laughs> Kira, I have to ask, I think it's always interesting because there's really two storylines to every season. There's the one that we see on, you know, when we're on YouTube and watching the show, but then there's also the experience that you live. How similar was the experience you lived to the one that you're now seeing play out on camera? Great question. So, that is, that's actually a really good question um, because there was definitely some points that I had not filmed that were, that showed up in the season. Um, I know at some point I had met up with Alex actually and Robbie and we had all gone to Robbie's place and we're watching Survivor together. Um, so it was interesting because I don't think that made that on the show there. And it was Yeah, more that was in this last episode. Uh, it got like, like a kind of it was like a <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't the whole thing, but yeah. it was Okay, so there was definitely a part of it there. Um, but I mean besides the parts that were shown, it definitely was just more about the social aspect of it, like yeah, you're seeing the strategy parts, you're seeing like what we're planning together, but you're not seeing the parts where we're just like hanging out, making plans and, you know, like the bonds that we were actually having, like as friends, um, those are definitely not shown in the like episodes that you're seeing. Um, I, I, I agree. And season two, especially, I think was a really cool season to follow along with like real friendships being made. Um, me and Ryan would bounce between survivor watch parties that different alliances were hosting. And, and we were there with you, Alex and Robbie. And I think that is something that gets missed um, both in real survivor and in college survivor. Like these people ha have to be with each other all the time. You can talk strategy for 20 minutes and get to the point you're looking for, but you're going to hang out for like two hours. There's a lot of life that goes into that too. So I, I love that you're talking about that because I think it's a, it is a cool aspect as well. Yeah. All right, we have, a, we have a question in the chat for you, Kira. Kira, in retrospect, was a huge mistake not to throw that last challenge before Merge to vote out Heidi, who ended up going against your guys' numbers, and then s save Kiwan? In hindsight, yeah. I mean, our tribe could have handled it. Like, we had our alliance, and we could have um, stuck with ourselves, and we could have definitely not have won that. Um, but, I mean, at that time, I had thought Bijan... Adj, I mean, I should have seen this coming too, but Bijan, Adj, and Kiwan would all stick together. So, in hindsight, yeah, it's it definitely makes sense. Um, but I'm also, it, yeah, like that's something that I should have done there, probably. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Kira, yeah. Well, oh, go ahead, Andrew. Go for it, Ethan. Oh, no. Okay. okay. So, I have to ask. So, you give Kiwan this fake idol you go to tribal and then he doesn't play it so like what were you thinking at tribal when he has this big shove having it around his neck he announces it everyone and then they go to call for idols and he does nothing I, like <laughs> i understand where, like the bravado he's like yeah like i'm gonna play this idol so people are gonna vote for me but no one's gonna switch their vote at that point because they had all been set on voting kiwan um and then I don't think anyone at that point knew it was a fake idol necessarily. Um, I want to say I love the comment that uh, like the contradicting comments where Bijan was like, wait, that, that might be real. That looks a lot like the one I have. And Alex was like, oh, no way that's real. That's totally <laughs> fake. And Alex hasn't seen an idol yet. That's the best part. And he was like, there's no way Ryan would make an idol like that. And oh, I want to, like, wait, I want to get something. Hold on, Kira. I have a nice oh. chair, Brandy. Got the nice little recliner going. Oh, no, it's dope. Dope. If you could actually see it, it's very old. Um, and a weird, bad color. All right, so I have all the the idols that have been played at home. So I believe this is your your idol, Kira, that you gave to uh that you gave to Kiwan. You know, it's mm -hmm. pretty decent looking. I like it. I like it. But here's my thing. Here this is this is your fake idol. And this is the idol Shane had that Robbie <laughs> also made. Which I saw. Did, did you <laughs> ever like make this connection, Kira? Look at these. You know what they're I They're like they're like the same beads. <laughs> I thought the fake idol, I thought Robbie had seen that and was able to find the same bead somewhere. 
you know, based on like the fact that Yukon is, there's not that many stores around us. I was like, you know, there's a good chance that he made it super realistic, especially with how hard he was playing everything. Um, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's valid. Store, but, you know, I was just <laughs> very much, yeah, did not see that. I mean, in your defense, the fake idols this season were so uh, convincing, in my opinion. Like, whenever he pulled out that first fake idol I looked at, I was just gobsmacked because I know I would have fallen for it. And especially looking at kind of the beats on the original idol, like, I wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, know, this one's pretty good. I have, that. I have the other, I have Ro uh, Robbie's idol over there. I think it's just, it's a little more colorful. And yeah. the beads are like, I don't know. It's a little better done, but it's the same idea. So, it's it's not it's not a it's not a bad fake. I agree. Well, yeah, I have I have another question for you. So you mentioned PTSD from Tribals, which it sucked right. that you went to one and that was it. Oh, um, for especially because you were in the merge and only went to one Tribal and that was it. That's crazy. <laughs> and I get to be in the um the tribal the council either or right. I know it's it's madness to me, but I just. Would you have traded some of those immunities to actually go to tribal? Because that's where you you build actual like re connections in tribal councils, where you see where the actual lines are and learn and gain trust. So do yeah, you think, do you think you were hurt by winning all yeah, those immunities? Yeah, it, it didn't help you honestly to be that safe. You're right. No, it's. I think I completely agree with that because since I was that safe, that was my first tribal council. I didn't realize the extent to which the tribal councils either put you together versus split you apart. Um, and I didn't realize that all these other tribes had been to these multiple times and had been really testing their bonds the entire time. Whereas we were just, and I was just, you know, banking on the fact that like, oh, everything's great. You know, I never, was, like I was blindsided, especially in like the wrong part of it when there was too many unknown variables for me and I couldn't see that coming. Yeah, I, I agree. And that's that's the thing that made me laugh the most about, about Kiwan's character through the whole game was how red strong he was. I'm like, you've done nothing actually with red. <laughs> yeah, they, they never voted <laughs> There's together. There's no substance to this obsession. Um, and yeah. I, I, think it, I think it befell on everyone in the Moynihan tribe, more or less, as, as we've yeah. seen them getting picked and you off. you see in this Noted. episode, we have yeah. a, a bit of a, a slaughter. We've had four reds in a row right now after your guys' initial dominance. And we're going to talk about that later, but, like, okay. Okay. yeah. Right. Uh, like, but to be fair, that is the part where we were close friends. Yeah. I And that's where I was like, I do trust these people because we were actually friends outside. Now, more than just the... I mean, at least I thought. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you guys are. You guys, you guys how, are cool. How, uh, I have a quick question here. Is how powerful was it, like, being really cold in the beginning and, you know, like, people giving rides out? I feel like that was actually, like, something a lot of people sleep on being, like, really impactful. I really think it, it did have a lot to do with it, like... Compared to walking home, because put in context, like we're at school, we have like classes after or we have homework and like we're just trying to go home and, you know, not be freezing on the walk home. So people who had cars, aka like Robbie and Bijan, it really it did, I think, give them like an extra boost, at least in terms of, OK, let's trust this person. We want to keep them around because, you know, they're driving us around. They're doing all <laughs> for us. I'd say it's like the same thing as someone being good at like, you know, like in the actual show. They're like the good, like, you know, like camp. it's basically like yeah. making fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you do have to trust someone to a certain extent. Like I've hung out with them for like an hour across three different events, but I'm going to get in a car with them. It builds trust. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Um, another thing I found funny was when I, apparently I didn't even realize that people were following our car. <laughs> on one yeah, that, that's a great moment. <laughs> that was wild to see. I was like, no <laughs> way is this like actually happening. I, like, I had no idea there were people behind us. Like, it was crazy to see that. And it was so funny for me because I was just laughing as I watched that episode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just on campus, people following us around. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> All right. Those are my main questions for Kira. Do you guys have anything else? Um, yeah, actually, one other thing, what was the, like, it, it just, like, surprised me how 
the entire tribe agreed to like look for the idol together. Yeah. Like <laughs> that really shook me. I was like, everyone's just okay with this. Like, who who would have thought? But, I, mean, I mean, the main part of it, I think, like to that point where everyone was okay looking for each other. I think we all had in our heads, okay, if one of us finds it yeah we'll keep it and we'll we'll keep this tribe we'll keep like our alliances and hopefully use that all to our advantage because it didn't really seem like it was gonna go away like i, I think at least with um Kiwan, barrett hope and i and everyone had their suspicions about robbie at the same point or i i you know we we're all a little bit suspicious but still trusting at the same time um yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it was just sort of the like it almost it helped build the like camaraderie right because yeah. everyone was like there's that sense yeah. of trust where i'm not going to use this idol to idol out someone but just sort of you know be there together as a, as a nice I, boy I, to hand i think the dynamics of that tribe was also what tore it down though because as we see in this episode they, you guys just seem so close and so willing to stick together that i think the majority alliance recognized that they need to break you guys down a lot before they make this game a little more flip and flop. And so the friendships that we made just <laughs> sometimes you like each other a little too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you guys were all close. I, I don't know if I mentioned this before in the podcast, but I actually I, I fucked up and I I somehow made an an honor a fully honors tribe uh, tribe. <laughs> in, in the red Moynihan's, I had no idea. I knew, I knew Kira was an honors. I knew Robbie was an honors, and I kind of knew Kiwan was an honors. There were a lot of honors in this game, but not. But I like separated people that knew each other. Like Kira and Robbie didn't really know each other before this. I don't think you guys didn't know each other, right? No. no. Hope and Barrett lived a floor apart from each yeah, other. Yeah, Hope and Barrett both lived in Buckley next to each other. So, and that, but they were like, I had no idea that they were an honors. So I think we uh. We started uh, looking a little more into that in future seasons to make sure that didn't happen again. I, I don't think that was necessarily why you guys were so close. I think that was possibly why you guys were so good at challenges. But, uh, <laughs> the smart people could figure out the math. That's what. Photo <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, it was great having you on the season, Kira. Obviously, it sucked to see it cut short at the merge, but it, it was it was a good story arc for you, I think, and I was it was fun watching you. Appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate being on the show. Everything it was definitely experience I would not trade. Um, and yeah, it was it was really fun. I'm glad you guys are doing this and putting this together and still like talking about it now. We we Absolutely. never stop talking about it. That's yeah, we never <laughs> stop. We're we're locked in for several more seasons. It's very sad. Um, <laughs> um but yeah, Kira, uh, thank you for coming on. Feel free to stick around, uh, but you can leave at whatever point if you need to as well. But we're gonna we're gonna chat about uh, this episode now. Uh, I think I do got to head out a little. I do have to head out right now. So I all right, no problem. Thank, <laughs> thank you for coming, coming tonight, out. Kira. Yeah, of course. There's a, there's a comment that just got thrown in saying, we love you, Kira. And the audience obviously was fans. We were fans. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for being a part of it. Our, our pleasure to have you. And thank you for, for building out our, our amazing family in this club. Mm -hmm. Anytime. <laughs> okay. All right. Have Back. a good night. Okay, you too. Thanks, Kira. Adios. <laughs> All right, great to hear from Kira. Some good stuff there, and I think she had some good points about the game. I liked the, I liked the analogy between camp life and uh, giving rides. I think that's actually kind <laughs> yeah, of true. I mean, that's it, it's how that social game works. Definitely, like playing in the first season where it was the fall and everything was warm. Like for the first more majority, like you know, it definitely allowed people. Also, the like abundance of freshmen, uh, who have it's like their very first semester. It sort of let them sort of like be farther apart and like because they're still trying to figure out a lot of their own like school life yeah i don't think anyone had a car in season one because it was a lot of freshmen and the people who weren't i think catherine and raf i don't think they had cars so right. it was just yeah it, it was a lot but of you know, that <laughs> that dynamic happens in a lot of college survivors i know for northeastern where the majority of people live off campus 
Um, so if you're an underclassman, you have meal swipes that you can give away. That is Sick. huge. We have a lot of players that like start alliances or, you know, pull numbers when they need to because they bring two people to a dining hall. And like, it's, it's funny how, you know, it's almost the flip where the, it seems that UConn, the upperclassmen have the upper hand because they can offer rides and stuff where, you know, for my survivor, it's always the underclassmen that have the upper hand there. So, I mean, I, I threw that in like the comments during the show, but uh, all of like Bijan, uh, Bijan's confessionals that aren't him in his like evil lair are like in, in a dining hall. And I'm like, oh, he's just using these swipes for sure. Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Bijan and Bijan and Robbie were snagging the swipes in this episode. I think that was Matt who's sophomore giving them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matt, Matt just dishes them out like it's nobody's business. And it's that is definitely like one of those things that you don't initially think of and then you're like yeah i mean it makes sense like that's so cool anything you can use as leverage by all means if i can put food in someone's belly and it makes them happy <laughs> that's what they do in the game why not why not college survivor yeah yeah i mean i had someone give me a textbook so <laughs> you know it is what it is i see a great strategy uh, first semester when you go to college, play Survivor, bring nothing, and just like bargain your way all of the supplies <laughs> you need through votes. That's the way to do it, folks. It's great. It's like the paper clip up to like something. I'll get like a new calculator <laughs> if I vote with you this week. <laughs> there you go. There Check you go. Backward next week. Like there's all the layers. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. All right. So um, getting back in the start of this episode. So episode seven. We started off right after Kira's blind side. Um, Maddie, Heidi, and Carolina, they're just talking a little bit about the aftermath. And they're like, they knew that Robbie would play his idol if Maddie played hers. We were talking about that a little in the last post show. So it seems definitely that uh, um, that was a intentional play by Maddie to try and burn Robbie's. So I think last time we decided that that was probably the right move for, to burn Robbie's. I mean... It, it kind of leaves him dead in this episode, especially that round where he doesn't have immunity. I think if he had an idol there, that's that's a game changer. Yeah, I, I don't know what to add to that because I think that's one hundred percent right. I feel I have Robbie, unfortunately, as great a character as he is, and as much as he put into this game, I feel like he was dead in the water. Uh, anytime he didn't have a necklace, was the the next time he didn't have a necklace was the time he was gone. Um, Alex said, has a quote here. He says, when you're the one in the middle, you burn people no matter what. You lose trust with people, but it's easier to mend relationships than form them right after voting against them. So what do, what do you guys think about Alex's position right now and throughout this episode? I mean, I got to say, I think he's playing a really strong game because he's playing that uh, he's like, it's sort of this like level of fluidity where he can he's put himself in a position where he can sort of bounce around where people won't really bat an eye. It's kind of weird because like it I mean it really shocks me how much um what is it? Uh like Moynihan was pushing for a Bijan like you know flip and like it didn't happen one vote and they were like, oh no, it's gonna happen again. Like he can flip. It's like I think Alex is in that position where he's like, everyone thinks that he can flip, but they don't, they aren't afraid of it at the same time. I don't know how he's playing that like fine line, but it's really impressive. And uh, being needed and wanted in a game of Survivor is one of the best assets you can have in your toolbox because if people are talking to you every week, you know, asking for your vote, that means your name is never going to come up. So he is in a great position in this episode. And, you know, I think that's why he's made it so far in this season thus far. I, I agree. If, if people are trying to bargain for your vote, they're not writing your name down because they need you. Uh, that's huge. And I think what Alex has done so well is something that, that Carson's talked about in the last couple of live shows, where if you're going to flip, you have to be better at apologizing than anyone else who flipped. And you better be good at pointing fingers. And I think... We don't necessarily see Alex doing that, but he, he has mended relationships, and Bijan's taken most of the heat for these moves. So Alex, if he gets to the end, gets all the same credit, but he gets so much less heat getting towards that point. So I think it puts him in a great position to, to move himself towards the end and have a real shot at winning this game. 
Uh, Carolina says here, she just talks about the aftermath. Mad and Robbie are mad, but their alliance is strong, and she's worried they can overcome. And then Robbie's like, this is the first time I haven't been in control in this game. And um, Bijan's talking about how Robbie's with him. And Robbie's like, oh, that wasn't such a good move. And Bijan's like, well, I'm in the majority. It was a good move for me. <laughs> so what what is Robbie's path in the game at this point, right after that first merge vote? Is it just to win immunities? Is it to... Um, what relationships do you think he maybe didn't itch in this episode that he should have um, dived into a little more? You know, it's one of those hard things uh, where Survivor is almost like driving a car in some ways. You know, if you pick up speed too quickly in the beginning, you go on the highway and you run out of gas, there's nothing you can do at that point. Um, and that's kind of what happened in this game. I, I mean, he came out guns blazing and it was fantastic to watch but he just kind of put himself in a corner and it was hard to get out of, which is a shame. In terms of what he could have done, I think you know there comes a point where you just have to throw caution to the wind and start chucking names out. If you're on the block and you know you're you know, gonna be the next one sent packing, blow something up, like start calling out people, call people out at tribal, just cause a ruckus. And cause you, if you throw enough stuff at the wall, something will stick. And that's when you stay for another week. And if you do that enough, then boom, you're at the final two or three. You're speaking my language, Andrew. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of names at Tribal, um, especially. And Robbie, while wearing a necklace, knowing once that necklace gone, he's screwed, still refused to use names. Yeah, yeah he didn't, want to, see, he didn't want to say whose names he was banking on for uh, the the split votes. He doesn't want to say Alex and Bijan. Absolutely. Bozo. I feel like most people in the game know by now, a almost everyone, that Alex and Bijan were possibly swing votes there. I mean, you're sitting at, like, the merge. I don't know why you can't blow it up. I mean, I understand being in that position. You're like, there's still, like, that part of you that's like, oh, I mean, I really don't want to throw these people out because they're, I mean, they can just be like, this, this snake right here. But it's like, yeah, you're Robbie was, like, like Andrew said, like, Robbie was running out of gas on the highway he i think his only option was to either like throw it in neutral and just start heaving or um like start pleading for people he's like come on fill me up fill me up and like throw his hazards on and go wild and he just sort of went down sort of by his own accord yeah i think Robbie i mean all yeah I think Robbie's best move was to slash everyone else's tires on his way out. Um, yep. <laughs> I think I think what he needed to do was um, flip on Matt, throw Matt under the bus as hard as he could, drag his name through the mud, do whatever he needed to. Um, Robbie just Robbie went from being the game's villain to just need to be the world's villain at that point. <laughs> he had nothing to lose. Um, I would have loved to see that. But <laughs> Yeah, amazing. I think Robbie at a certain point needs to leverage himself as such a big target that you just keep him. And then maybe he wins a key immunity, maybe he wins a key get finds a key idol, and then all of a sudden Robbie has a chance to slip into the end. But as it is now, his his numbers that he has, Matt, uh, Hope Barrett, they're not doing him any good really when he is the biggest threat of those numbers and he's in the minority. Those numbers didn't matter at all in this episode. They failed both times, and he goes home. You need to you need to throw a little caution to the wind, and you need to go um, guns a blazing, and so, maybe yeah, you burn I those. Thought, I, but, I definitely thought that it was kind of wild when, um, just like I mean, yeah, it's there's still a large group of people, but I think that Has Moynihan was so tight they could have just tried to like get some of the people that. I don't think trying to go for a Bijan Alex swing was smart. I think they should have gone for more of like a Heidi. Um, Cause you know, like Maddie and uh, Caroline are like very, very tight. Um, but I think like, if you really like, if Robbie was very desperate and just starts like pleading like crazy, be like, Hey, I'm the biggest threat. I'm going home. Like we can, we can get something going here, but he just sort of stuck hard with red, which hurt him big time yeah yeah I and i will yeah 
Oh, okay. I was going to say, you know what? There's some obvious game players in this season, like Heidi. And I, first of all, I'll say I'm a Heidi stan in this season. Fantastic to watch. Absolutely amazing. Um, I will say that if you can recognize those people in this season and you can lure them in with, you know, oh, this is going to be great for your resume without saying it's going to be great for your resume come Final Tribal. If you can pitch them the idea of a flip with, oh, it's really good for your game because now it looks like you're doing more. That's a really good way to pull in someone like, you know, a Heidi or a Bijan. If you come to them and just say, here's my plan, please follow it. It's not as convincing. Um, it's you. You have to show kind of the what's in it for me of it all for them at the end of the day. Yeah, it's it's all about sales. Um, you're selling to someone. You're not uh, barely selling yourself. You're trying to sell some a move to someone else. So you need to make it their move. Essentially, you want it to be your move in your own head, but you need to make them think it's theirs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Matt is talking a little bit about the aftermath of his vote, and he's panicking. He knows he needs to push himself a little more socially out of his current boundaries, or he'll go home. What do we think about Matt's performance in this episode? He's someone who I felt like pre-merge was in a really good spot. He was between alliances. Then he's kind of he's kind of shifted himself into a corner here. Obviously, he survives from the first. Uh, three votes of this merge, like paganging of his uh, alliance of like the Moynihan's plus Matt. But do we think there's any room for Matt to maneuver in this past this episode? And do we think he put himself in a good position to be able to maneuver? Or what what what's the future hold for? Yeah, uh, that one immunity definitely shot himself in the foot so hard. <laughs> that was crazy. Um. But I, I personally really like what Matt's doing, where he's just, like, he feels almost like he's alone on the game, but he has enough, like, enough value to other people that he can, you know, stick around. I think, yeah, I think Matt, because of his pre-existing relationships that were outside of Red, that's a huge advantage to him. And I think the fact that um, he is a charming dude. Um, I was rooting against Matt for most of this game. I'll be quite frank. And then I had like one 10 minute conversation and I was like, all right, Matt, do win it, please. <laughs> you were rooting against Matt? I don't remember that. I, I was, I was anti Matt because, um, it hasn't super shown up in the edit yet, but it is there the, Heidi hates Matt in this game. Really? I, I like, you would I not pick I, that up. Like, at Tribal, you see her, like, point at him. Um, Matt mentions it, too, where he's like, Heidi's been gunning for me. Heidi tries to make the vote, Matt, every week. <laughs> um, <laughs> Try to make it Robbie every week. <laughs> well, yeah, but even more so. Like, the underlying bits. So I I was rooting for Heidi in this game through, through most of it. And then Matt Matt stole my heart. Um, so I think he, he has a great way to integrate with people and a great way to... To, to reinvigorate his game. And I think losing Robbie um, could help him a lot, especially as, as we'll work through the, um, the episode as we go. But how the numbers are lining up, um, I think it, seven is the, like the next tribal council is at seven. Seven's a great time for something to happen. And Matt wants to be a part of that something that happens. So I think he has outs. Mm -hmm. I agree completely. All right, so we go into this challenge. This challenge, we call it Penalty Box. I don't know where I got the name. I thought it was fun. Um, I like hockey. Um, it's based off a challenge in Big Brother All-Stars 1, if you guys have ever seen or remember that. It was basically it was a power veto challenge where you got to do different tasks to get to next round. And basically, Chicken George wins the veto because he puts himself on slop, which is like unflavored oatmeal for the whole summer. And uh, I, I always liked that veto. I thought we could translate here. I don't think it came out exactly how I wanted, but I think it was still interesting. And we'll, we'll see, it. We'll, we'll talk about it. But um, we go through, the, let's go through the task briefly, briefly. Water on the head, it was, it was very stupid. Everyone did it, but it was funny. I thought <laughs> everyone was just was giggling. a little cold. Like just enough to it was, like- It was cold out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I think um, this, then, this, this would have been like the very end of March or early April. It was still a little brisk in, in stores. Yeah. And then uh, then we got the makeup job. Uh, Tatiana, our, our social media coordinator, she uh, she brought out the the old, the, I think the the cheap stuff she or the stuff she didn't use, and uh, <laughs> uh, hi, uh, Tot and Ethan decided to be makeup artists for this episode. And uh, I think I want to talk about these uh, works of art here. So, <laughs> who 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 got hit the hardest by the makeup challenge? Oh, Maddie. Yeah. Hands down. I, I agree. I agree. Poor Maddie. Maddie. Maddie looked like a drag queen who stopped halfway in getting ready. <laughs> like, there's so much, like, caked on her eyebrows and, like, oh. cone, and then it just stopped. Like, it's not a finished look. So Eric got a lot in, like, a comical way. Like, he, he looked like a clown. But like Maddie's like looks like it almost could have been real, but it's just like really bad. <laughs> yeah. like, this is like someone, this is like their first time making like doing makeup, and they really, really wanted to wow someone. <laughs> I will say though, someone on production was living their best life because it's very quiet. But someone does say, "Let's put a nice matte lip on Hope." So <laughs> somebody on production wasn't even. I heard that. I was like, wait a second. I have to rewind. Did I hear that correctly? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not, I know nothing about makeup, but I was having the time of my life. <laughs> I, I don't know how the brushes are supposed to work. So I made them work how I decided they should. <laughs> It was great. I think I, I think Hope had one of the idea. best ones. Hope had, Hope I had some paint. Nice like chin strap action too. That was I loved hers. Oh, it's yeah. just so funny. Like, it's just that, just I like I like Heidi's mustache. That was pretty mm -hmm. good. Um, I, th I think Alex. I think that's what yeah. Heidi was up there with the little handlebar. I liked Barrett's um, marionette. It's like, like oh, yeah, yeah. I Alex initially got funny. absolutely yeah. Barrett's was just like funny. It, I yeah. really enjoyed seeing it. <laughs> and then Matt liked what I did to him. That made that was, I was like, yes. Matt's like, you know what? I, I can get behind this. <laughs> he, I think he says, I have war paint on. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what, Matt? Okay. Like, props to I'll you. I'll give it to you. <laughs> Absolutely. That was so um, much fun for me. <laughs> so, next up, um, we have. The everyone has the makeup, and the next task is um, to not compete in the next immunity challenge. To compete in this one, so this I got this idea. Same thing from Big Brother. I believe it was you can't compete in the next power veto challenge. You compete in this one. I think it's a little different. I think it's a little harsher here. And this is where the re I think the real tough decisions come in, and we have a lot of people step out. And the people that decide not to compete in this next community challenge are Heidi, Carolina, Matt, Robbie, and Hope. So that leaves just Barrett, um, Bijan, Alex, and Maddie in the uh, nuts competition that we see later in the episode. So to not compete in the next community challenge, that's tough, especially for the people in that position. But uh, do you think... Any one of these five, Heidi, Carolina, Matt, Robbie, Hope, made the wrong decision right off the bat. I I I really don't think so. Like, in all honesty, even though Hope was the, even though Hope went home, like I don't, I don't think that really would. Like, it, it's at the position where it. I think at that point, it was really anybody was up for grabs. And it's it's a really hard decision to make, and I think that just comes down to like personal, like choice. If you think that you want to compete in the challenge, it I don't think it really played a big part in the actual game, other than Robbie, who obviously had to win the, that week. I think maybe for Hope it wasn't the best decision, um, because she wasn't like I, I don't know. Because she because she dropped out before taking on the penalty votes and stuff, um, and and lost her chance at immunity. To then not have a chance at immunity and not win, uh, have a chance next week. That was a tough spot for her. Um, for Carolina, maybe she could have not 
done this one because again she she also didn't go much further with the challenge um but the people who are in the majority i feel like why not go for it because then it puts more pressure on robbie and matt who are the clear targets mm -hmm. and make them take on all of these crazy things which they do to themselves regardless but oh my gosh heidi explained it she's like i wanted to make sure they had to go further and i was like that's a good thought heidi like that's that's what you should be trying to do is putting pressure on these people um, what was, what was going to happen if like those two didn't want to do one of the further tasks? Um, like if they both decide no at the same round. Yeah. Uh, we, we had some other tasks involved, but we, had we, we, were, we, had, we were assuming, um, one, they wouldn't break at the same round technically, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, ultimately, what we decided on what was going to happen was they were they would likely tie. But uh, if if neither of them went the same round, I don't know. Maybe they would have. Maybe they would have. Uh, neither of them would have won immunity. I would have had to rethink that again. This the fr I think the frustration with this challenge is it didn't really go as we expected. So uh, we had to. Uh, if we were ever were to do it again, we'd have to um, re restructure it a little. But uh, it was still fun. And... I think the premise was really good, though. Sort of like, I think it would have helped if there was more, like, physical, like, repercussions or, like, mental repercussions instead of game repercussions. Shave your head. Yeah. <laughs> Just, like, <laughs> it's go to town. No, there it's, was one it's tough because we can't, we can't haze them. We we can't... No hazing. We never haze on Survivor Yukon. Make that blatantly obvious. There was one task that didn't make the edit. Uh, mostly, it was hard to film, and it didn't really like come off that great. I, I think it was a good choice to cut it. I think it was a good choice to cut it out, but we did make the the people after they post on the Instagram, um, which we'll talk about. They <laughs> had to then go to the student union, which is next door, and walk up to some strangers and ask them if they think they're pretty, um, and if they would go out with them. So we had Robbie, Matt, Hope, and Heidi all did that. All went up. We're just, we just pointed at a table, and I just walked with them, filming them. And they were just like, "Do you think I'm pretty? Would you like go on a date with me?" And they all did it. It was awesome. Did, did anyone get a like positive response? Yeah, a, a couple of them got yeses. Not real yeses, but well, yeah. But <laughs> like that's like, college students know weird shit happens all the time. They bought in. It was worth it. I gotta say, like that is amazing. Like I would have wanted to see more of like that, like sort of just insanity instead of like game repercussions and like also like when you're in that deep you just like you're like oh, here we go I don't <laughs> yeah i think ultimately we figured more people would drop on the game repercussions uh, especially i mean the game repercussions i think are worse and we still saw a lot of people like stick it out like and I think I think to to conclude this, I want to just talk about we we have Matt and Robbie who just they just send it. I oh mean, I, I don't. I think I think this was the right decision for Robbie. I I, I have to say I think Robbie w would have been in a tough spot without immunity here. But I don't know what your guys' thoughts on this. But I think Matt uh, inadvertently inadvertently um, hurts both of them, both Matt and Robbie, by pushing for this. But do you think Matt without immunity would have gone home this week? I do. I, I think that there is a very strong – I think he would have been the next in line to go had he not done anything. But I think he had a lot of options where he could have reached out, like, across the aisle to try and stay in. Like, I think he really could have, like, had a good talk, like, solo with Bijan that was – better than what he did with Robbie. Um, and I think, like, and, like, also reach out to, like, just Alex or the girls. And I think, like, he had a, he definitely had a stronger ability to stay in than Robbie. But uh, had he done, like, the same thing that he did with immunity, he would have gone home. Yeah, but at the same token, like, if you put yourself in such a vulnerable situation where you're going to get a penalty vote at literally every tribal... He, like you're you take a, so much weight off your shoulders and you're so much less of a threat and people know that you really can't do that much so you kind of turn the narrative i mean especially after this episode when like 
Robbie's gone and Hope's gone. And now it's just Matt and Matt, you know what the next like however many travels can't really do anything. Um, it puts you almost in a better situation because you have a lot more conversations you can have. Um, and especially when you're coming into tribals, like knowing you're not part of this core five NATO alliance, which we'll talk about, you know, it's, it comes to your, you know, who knows, maybe it, it helped him out in some ways, you know? Because everyone's like, I mean, he already has like votes down the line. Free, it's it's free real estate. Like, it, yeah, it literally is. It is. I think it was, a hun- honestly, I think it was 100% the right decision for Matt to go all the way with Robbie. Um, I think Matt does go home if Robbie's immune and he's not. And I think one of, one of the quirks of the penalty votes is Matt has them. But Heidi also has a couple. Um, she she just has the one. She just had the one. Yeah. But and Matt, yeah, just just the one. But like the thing is, if if multiple people have penalty votes, which was the case going into the next round, like it's not like if as long as you target someone else with the penalty vote, it like nullifies it. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. if, if two people with penalty votes are the ones receiving votes the next get round. It's like they didn't exist anyways. So. I think Matt absolutely made the right choice just gunning for it. And I think he needed the immunity that round in order to, to give him pathways forward. So I think it was I think it was his best play to stick it out and he didn't know he would they would get two necklaces, but it worked out for him brilliantly. I I think I have to say just to conclude this before we move on, I, I, I think I think you guys bring up good points. I think I think it it is possibly smart for Matt to do that. I, 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 I wouldn't have done it personally. I think, I think if I'm Matt, I think if I'm Matt, I need to let Robbie get it. I don't have votes around, and then bank on my relationship with Bijan and relationships that we can throw it on uh, Hope or Bear at this round because Bijan is closer to me than those two, and Bijan is a big power player in this game right now. So. I think I think Matt should maybe try and stick it out. Obviously, it's high risk, high reward. He could just go home, like you guys I said. Mean, but props to I, him for being able to do that. Like I would have caved. Yeah, that it, I'm not that it's good. tough. It's tough. Yeah, I <laughs> That's agree. Like I agree. Insanity. All right. So, um, so Robbie just talks a little about how he's in a tough spot. The Reds put themselves in a bad spot. And he he could be next, so that's why he went for this. Hope thinks things do not look good, obviously, and they don't end up looking good for her. And then Maddie is and it's just talking about Matt and Robbie went this far. It was bad. She she doesn't like it. I think Bijan is pretty shocked by it, but some people are like, okay, maybe not the worst. And then uh, this NATO alliance, as Heidi dubs it later in the episode, they're considering between Barrett and Hope. So I think Alex says his point of view is he wants Hope gone because he thinks the three girls um, could pick up Hope and they have a better relationship uh, with her than he does. And uh, I think Heidi um, is basically says that, yeah, I have a better relationship with Hope. I want Barrett gone. And those are kind of the, the two parts of this coin. And ultimately, they choose um, Hope to go home. Do you guys think this was the right decision? Hope over Barrett. Right decision for who? <laughs> for, for the, well, yeah, who was I, I'd say who was this a good decision for of the five and who was this not a good decision? I, I think Bijan and Alex won that. Um yeah. I think because be, because Robbie we know can't win immunity the next round. Unless he finds an idol, he's he's he should just have his bag packed for final eight tribal. Um so you know what the final seven is going to look like. Um, get, just you, you kind of do like it, it's it's predictable at that point. And if there's four girls versus three guys, I think the three guys are in trouble. But by getting out hope, I think it it gives a lot more power to Bijan and Alex and gives them a lot more um, mobility at seven. Because I don't think the five is going to go to five. Not that I know or anything, but. Um, Seven's a great time to flip, and I hope there's stuff that happens. And I think it gave Bijan and Alex more chances to make things happen. Okay, I, so, I completely agree. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that Alex and um, Bijan won with that. I mean, I don't, I've never met Barrett personally, but just like from what I've seen, I've, I have met Hope before, but I think Hope is a much more like charismatic person. And I think she's able to work with other people and get into those groups easier than Barrett does. So I think at, at the end of the day, smarter to get her out than Barrett. Yeah, I agree. And Hope had the right relationship in Heidi that, that got her into an alliance of four come seven. So I, I think voting out Hope works really well for Bijan and Alex. And we'll, we'll have to see if that's true. Where'd you meet Hope, Eric? Uh, I've had a few classes with her. Yeah, they're both the, uh, civil both engineering and environmental engineering would run into each other. I mean, nice. I also take environmental engineering classes. There you go. Nerds right. who like the planet. So the the Moynihan's and Matt, their angle, as we've talked about, is to flip Bijan. So Bijan Alex, part two. And later we got part three. But Bijan <laughs> meets with Matt and Robbie. Bijan wants to just he Bijan says his confession. He's like, I kind of want to just vote Matt out, but then Bijan will be Bijan Alex will be at the bottom of this NATO alliance with the three girls there. So he recognizes he might need to keep Matt around for a bit. So Bijan's talking Matt, and Bijan goes, Matt, I have the idol, and Bijan's like, I'm going to put, I'm going to give it to you, not. Not this round, because you're immune, obviously. And not the next round, because he's like, Robbie will just go home. He's like, the round after. So this upcoming up, so final seven. He's like, I'm going to give you the idol, Matt. And you're going to, you can idle out whatever. Idle out someone that benefits both of us, I guess. What, what, do, you, what do you think? And then Bijan confessional, he's like, oh, yeah, I told Matt the idol. Uh, screw me. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but uh, what, 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 do we, what do we think? Was this Was this a positive for Bijan to tell us to Matt? Is it never a positive to say this? Don't tell people you have the idol. <laughs> Don't offer to give away the idol. Like, it's mine. Yeah, that, that alone is just like, holy crap. Because, like, I mean, Matt said it. He's like, I mean, and Bijan's lying. There's going to be hell to pay. It's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, I mean, when it comes to the possibility. Yeah, to be completely honest, idols with idols, like, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, like, because you're a target the next week, and if you tell anyone, you're immediately a target, and, like, maybe you'll grow trust with, like, one person, but you know it's going to get past that relationship, and then it's just going to turn on you in the end, so, ultimately, I think having an idol in itself can be dangerous, as, you know, awesome as it seems at first and obviously telling somebody about it that you in a previous confessional are talking about wanting to vote out potentially <laughs> like you know it's maybe not the best move i like that the juice is not worth the squeeze i, I i'd agree idols are a tricky thing to play and i think ultimately if you're in a position you need an idol you're usually not playing very well uh, especially like this early enough in the marriage if, if you're late like final six five then you could sneak by maybe but yeah right if you if you need an idol at say final eight and you play it correctly everyone's like hey he doesn't even have an idol anymore let's go for that guy next yeah. <laughs> win, like four or five more immunities to keep it off of you that's it's not feasible if you play it at final five and it's a final three that's one more. Hell yeah, I'll, I'll take that gamble. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Bijan's telling Matt and Robbie straight up. He's like, he'd get Hope or Baird out this round, then one of the three girls this round. And they're like, okay, we got to play the cards. Hope or Barrett, we'll go for it. And then Bijan talks a little bit about um, Future's game. He's like, the only person that can he's, – he's getting cocky here, as, as Bijan does – he, he, he likes to um, to his own horn every episode, but so far, um, it seems to be working. I mean, <laughs> he, he's, it's going well. So Bijan says the only person that can really stop him in this game is Alex. He's, he's scared of how Alex is positioned. He, and then Alex, we, we cut to Alex, and Alex, he's recognizing he's doing a lot better than he was like early in this game. Blindside at the first vote, 
um, on the outs of his original tribe. And now, now Alex Alex has a lot of power in this game. So what what is the Alex Bijan dynamic? How is that looking going into the future of this game? I mean, that's a that's a Emperor Palpatine Darth Vader right there. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> like Bijan builds Alex up so much, and you know, you know Darth Vader's ready to just like da. I love that reference, Eric. I think that's honestly a great um I don't know who's who necessarily, but just like they're both evil. They're both these like prominent forces. Um and there's like, damn, how do I stop either of them? Only one of them can stop each other. However, I think Bijan forgot a critical thing when he said the only person who can stop him is Alex. Bijan has the full power to stop himself. Bijan, <laughs> Bijan has put the cart before the horses several times, and I I don't know if or when it'll catch up to him, but he his faith in himself is admirable, and it's worked every time so far. I don't know if it can work every time still to go. So it's, yeah, we it's, see it. Yeah, it's sorry gonna, to interrupt. It's going to be a lot of of excitement. Yeah, we see it even in this episode with telling Matt the Idol. I mean, there's so many times in this game, Bijan has played so well and made great moves because he's so confident. He puts these ideas forward. But he also gets caught in himself and maybe does some things that he shouldn't and that makes people not trust him or puts him in a tougher spot than he maybe necessarily needs to. So he's not great at like necessarily picking out like when to talk more or talk less. He's definitely a talker. But I don't, I don't think it's exaggerated enough yet that it's done any damage to this game. Um, so we get to um, this vote, and ultimately the Moynihan's plus Matt. Um, they all end up voting Maddie. It, it seems like for a second there you get the maddie votes piling in you're like oh is something actually happening here but no they just all decide to pile on maddie even though it seemed like matt robbie uh, kind of knew it was it wasn't meant to be and i think you you see this a little in robbie's confessional i think he's like trying to plant a target on maddie that like she's this big player in the game, so then Rob, Maddie might take the hit instead of him eventually. Um, do you think this was a good move piling the votes on Maddie, even when uh, she's they know she's probably not going home, or do you think you just suck it up and uh, vote for Hope with everyone else? Oh no, voting Hope would have been bad for his game. Um, if if Robbie has any any aspirations of making it to the end and Matt they don't want to flip on on the one person who's stuck with them even through shit creek um voting against hope would lose her jury vote and and just put a bad taste in everyone else's mouth like really that's what you're going to do right here um and i think maddie's the perfect person to put a target on um she's a part of this this inseparable duo of her and carolina and she's already won an immunity challenge so if there's anyone you can try and frame i think he picked the right one uh, yeah, I think Maddie's the easy target because you know that she's really good at challenges, has great connections already, and I mean, she's obviously like a power player in the game, so might as well double down with that. I mean, she's not only the biggest target they can go for, she's also the best person to go for that you can then spin after because you can say, oh, well, she won a challenge, so we had to. Oh, we... You know, she's in this duo, so we had to. You could put the blame there, whereas if you pick anyone else, you have to basically then acknowledge, oh, we all talked about how we kind of want to vote you, and if you know they're not going, then you've just pissed off another person. At least with Maddie, you can explain it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Jacob saying in the chat, I imagine Alex and Bijan is doing the optimal thing and flipping at seven so they're talking about maybe next up so i'm really hoping matt can pull a come from behind here but it's looking like an alex or Bijan win and then he says i think it'd be great if Bijan alex flip next vote and then matt and barrett flip at six against alex and Bijan. do we see that as is that a reasonable path that can happen i'm i'm, I'm trying to picture that 
I mean, here's the thing. I can sit here and do shoulda, woulda, couldas all day on kind of <laughs> what people could do or like the possible like, you know, uh, uh, like the sets that possibly could show up in the future. Sure. But I, I think that, you know, what we know is that there's a few really good, strong alliances in this game. And I know we're going to get to it. Heidi is in a fantastic position. Um and I like again, we can go through and say this person can flip here, this person can flip here, which I think is great. But ultimately, I think you just have to look at the snapshot you have of kind of what's happening. And based on the knowledge, you know, assess and act. Um, so I really can't like say, oh, they should know to flip or they should know, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because ultimately, you only know what you know um, and you don't know everything. No. I I think if Absolutely. they did, it would be really entertaining to watch, but it's just one of those things that's like, I don't know. I, I, I Seeing how smart Bijan and Alex are, I'm sure they've thought through that exact scenario a dozen different ways and every other possible scenario. So you also have to factor in who wins immunity. Is there another idol that's hidden from the merge? Um, Bijan has his idol and Alex knows about it and Matt knows about it, but other people don't. And when does that come into play? Like, there's there's so many layers of this game that go into the decision making that anything is really still on the table. Like it feels like there's these clear paths. And I think given the edit and given the season so far, it does really feel like it should be Alex or Bijan. And you I think know. they have excellent players going forward. But at, again, everything is on the table at all times. Do we know that Alex knows Bijan has an idol? Yes. Okay. That, that I, I might have missed that part then. Yeah, that was that was like an episode or two ago where he mentions it to him. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we get to this next challenge, and I'm just going to start breezing through here. This, this vote's a lot quicker than the first one, but I just want to yeah. wrap things up so we're not going too late. Um, this is the nuts challenge. Um, we get the immunity back from Robbie and Matt, and I just want to say this, this is one of my favorite parts of the episode, where Robbie wants me to take the necklace off like Jeff Probst style, <laughs> and yeah. Matt's like, here, here you go. <laughs> like, that's such a Robbie moment. This like such a survivor guy that... Well, Robbie was just like, waiting for you to like call that. him Mariano. Like, I think that's how deep <laughs> this persona he was. And th there's another great Robbie moment when they're eating with Bijan. Oh my gosh, they're, talk that was they're so talking funny. about Survivor, and Robbie's like, "Have you seen the season where Boston Rob wins?" <laughs> <I'm> like, oh <laughs> and then Bijan just like spins up his drink and walks away. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> so good. I mean, like. Robbie's talking about Boston Rob like a little kid talking about Superman. Yes. Like, it's just so <laughs> innocent and sweet. It's awesome. I'm going to disagree. I think one of my favorite parts of this episode is when Ryan's explaining the challenge and uh, you're explaining the nuts challenge and everyone in the background is dying laughing but trying to keep composure. It kills me. I, I, I think I watched that part like three times. It was so funny to me just watching everyone just like trying to keep a, a cold face for the camera and then just cackling it's so good <laughs> oh, and then the, uh, the black and white mark <laughs> is yeah. uh, the, the flashback is good I, I laughed so loud my mom was like are you okay like you just screamed from your room i'm like yeah <laughs> trust me it's all right <laughs> i mark I love him to death. I don't think I've met someone worse at challenges. Um, <laughs> so funny. And then the fact that he was, he was there to help film. Him and um, Alex just from the, season one are sitting next to each other just laughing about how bad they both were at this challenge as they're watching uh, people do it. It was so much fun. Um, so go through this challenge quickly. Just some highlights. Alex and Bijan sucked this challenge. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, they the were so they bad. Right and Barrett, Barrett, Barrett wins immunity. He he makes his stack like three, four minutes in, and he just keeps it up for the while. So I, I think I think this was the good strategy. We could talk about strategies. We'll, we'll maybe skip over that, but I think the two strategies, of the two strategies, I think Barrett did it. I think it's right to like make your stack and then wait for someone to catch up, and if right when there's catching up, then you keep going instead of like trying for the nine. But I don't know. I, yeah, I think I think Maddie um, shouldn't have even tried to go for the eight. Um, she made her stack of seven faster than Barrett, so she's got to think she can make her stack of six faster, or that Barrett's going to knock it down at eight. 
or if Barrett gets the eighth, then you try for it. So I think Maddie should have held. That's my only like strategy comment on this challenge. I think get a solid lead and wait is the best way to get through this one because nine is really hard. I don't think I've ever successfully made a stack of nine trying yeah. this challenge. So props to Barrett. Uh, I love that Barrett won. I think it's awesome because Barrett's been kind of quiet, and I think him winning is is both hilarious and amazing. Um, so. I'm a big I'm a big fan of Barrett getting deeper into this game. The still where Barrett's just sitting there, hands in the pockets, like Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this is so funny. It's great. It's, great. it's so baller. It's just yeah. such like a flex on everybody. Oh, yeah. Especially as he's just looking at Maddie, get to like six and a half, and then they just I, I think one of the best shots of the episode is just Maddie just like slumped on the table and then just would you just see the defeat and you just feel so bad like i just wanted her to get up to seven just for her own sake entirely absolutely post challenge we have Bijan and alex talking a bit about how much they sucked at that challenge i don't know who was worse i think alex ended up being worse i think alex was worse i don't think alex was really bad it was bad when alex was like there was my another great shot is when he drops like a stack of two you're like alex (laughs) (laughs) what's going on (laughs) um and then Matt's like, he wanted Maddie to win because he wouldn't he wouldn't mind increasing her threat level if she's winning challenges and sh- she's not the target this round anyways. So it's going to be Heidi with the penalty votes, which I think is smart. And so Matt, Barrett, Robbie, they, they're talking about this vote. They're like, Heidi needs to go. Penalty vote, put it on her. She's the one in the, the other alliance with the penalty vote, which makes sense. And uh, again... Bijan and Alex, they're going to do it this round. And I, I think there's some legitimacy to it because Bijan kind of set it up as this, like, um, we get out Hope or Barrett this round, and next round's pivotal round will make a move. And um, they're like, if even if Alex isn't down with it, if they have Bijan, Alex isn't going to go to Rocks, which I think is fair. I don't think he'd go to Rocks. Um, but... Uh, and Heidi really wants Robbie out for, as, like, revenge for the chains. So obviously, those two are opposed. But, uh, yeah, they they end up just, like, Bijan just doesn't go for it. He's just like, Robbie needs to go out now. Robbie goes home. So do you think that was that was the right decision? Was there anything Robbie could have done differently or played a different angle there? I mean, we kind of said it. I mean, his back was against the wall start lighting some firecrackers, do whatever you can to like draw the attention somewhere else. I mean, he name drops Heidi a few times in the episode, which I get, but if you're going to do it, go big. You know what? Like Mm -hmm. do whatever you can to make sure you're not the name people are talking about. Um, But like I said, he, yeah, he played a great game prior up to this. I mean, I think Robbie still has that target going forward because he also has what, two more penalty votes in future rounds. And I don't think he's gonna. He could win back to back immunities. I mean, he might win one of those, but he's still like at a severe disadvantage in the game. So I think he definitely could have tried to leverage that a little harder than he did. But I mean, at the end of the day, Bijan and Alex just weren't taking it. So not much. Yeah, I think Robbie and Robbie in this vote and Hope in the vote before didn't leverage enough the fact that they have these votes and they're sitting out of these challenges. If I were Hope in that vote, oh. I would pitch Barrett. Like, yeah. Barrett can compete in this next challenge. Barrett doesn't have a vote against the next challenge. Get Barrett out. And, like, I mean, Barrett won immunity. I don't think it really affects anything, ultimately, because Barrett was never the target there. Like, if Barrett won or not. But uh, Hope... Um, Hope needed that to survive when it's between the two of them. And I think the Reds were too stuck on like trying to flip to the flip people, their numbers instead of uh, burning each other and just like self-sacrificing for uh, to live another day. But yeah, I, I think, I think especially in college students, you don't necessarily always get that, uh, um, that, that cutthroat of like your own, of because pe- like people want to work with these people they don't they don't this isn't maybe they would turn on them eventually but they don't want to turn on this early and i think people get stuck in that mindset of like i don't want to turn on them right now because i like them and they're not a threat to me so 
why vote out like an ally, but self preservation is real. College, I mean, it's yeah. Um, if you, when you're going into like a final seven, you're on like day 30 on the island and you only have nine more. In College Survivor, we were on like day like 65 and we still have like 25 more to go. Like, you're with these people forever. If you piss them all off and because of how much time you're putting into this game, you're not going to have any friends to talk to, let alone <laughs> like allies. Like, you, these are the people you invest so much like time and life into. So, you want it like they matter to you and it's not for a million dollars. So, you're not. It's it's super. I'm not super cutthroat. I saw that comment pop up. I'm a I'm a big softy. <laughs> but it's I'm a big weenie. But um, I I think there's there's definitely value to to keeping friends because I want to make friends out of this. I mean, I yeah, playing this game, I've definitely been like, no, like why why would you do that? Come on, like you just want to be with your boys, and you know. I mean, I'm a softy at the end of the day, unlike Cutthroat Ethan down there. But <laughs> yeah, you definitely have a soft spot for for the fellas, and you wanna you wanna stick around with them, and try and get everyone <laughs> get everyone uh, through it. So it's it's tough. Uh, I think one more thing I wanted to bring up before this, the vote result and our conclusion is uh, we have a scene with Heidi Heidi and Bijan are talking. Heidi. She's just talking about she's not opposed to voting Maddie out. She doesn't really want to, but like she doesn't see it as the worst thing for her. She recognizes that in this group of five, she could align with the three girls, make a three like an alliance with those three against the other two. She could align with the 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 Jaskilkas, which is like Alex, her, and Maddie. That could be against like Bijan Carolina, that group. She could align with the three non rowers. She no recognizes that Carolina and Maddie are close. She could just align and try and take out that duo. So she seems to be, in theory, well positioned in this group of five. And Bijan even recognizes, he says, he's unsure how he'll get Heidi out eventually. What, what do you guys, what do you guys think of that scene? It was perfect. I mean, I, I she proves that she's in such a good position in this game, um, and I, I mean, really, she is the safest person right now. Nobody is really, nobody has an in. Nobody has a way to break her apart because if any of anyone within those five tries to flip, they're gonna need her. Um, and like she said, she has so many different options to go to, unlike anybody else. Yeah. I, I think Heidi is in the best spot of anyone right now. But because she's in the best spot of anyone right now, it puts her in danger down the road. She has to pick the, the right grouping to move forward with uh, at seven and potentially at six if she gets there. But then come, come five or late game, if people are recognizing like everyone loves Heidi and Heidi is the reason that these things work, does Heidi get all the credit at the end? So it's going to, her threat level, although she's maintained it well right now and put herself in a great position, is only going to increase with every round as people start realizing it as they are now and then pointing fingers at her more and more so. And then also, like, on to her, like, final, if she makes it to final, like, what her sort of, like, spiel is going to be if, like, because, like, at the end of the day, these people have, they work, like, they do so much together, like, that, like, any, like, turn is very personal and definitely hurts them a lot and she has to sort of pick who's going to overlook that or you know it's not going to phase them all right so at the end of the episode we see the end of boston robbie he uh, goes home and very very simple vote the lines that have persisted through this merge are still strong and now we are down to barrett and matt oh the the two from that um that original merge alliance do do we see an escape for matt and barrett after this episode do we see them being pulled into a big move uh, at final seven or do you think do you think it will just continue i mean they're both great grabs they're both great grabs i mean if you have barrett who's a little bit more quiet in the season you know he doesn't have a lot of baggage so if you're able to scoop him up that's pretty easy also, Matt, we already kind of mentioned it. He has a vote coming at him basically at every tribal. So that's so much leverage you have on your side. And in a game where it really comes down to the, you know, the core five NATO alliance, plus a couple, 
you know, free agents, if you will, now, <laughs> you know, like, who knows? Who knows? Maybe you'll have a revolution on your hands. Ooh. Yeah, I think the fact that there's two free agents is huge because say the three girls uh, align with Barrett, that's a majority for it. Say um, Bijan and Alex align with Barrett and Matt, that's an alliance of four. Say any combination of people just breaking out, grabbing one or two of them, there's so many different permutations that could happen. That's why seven is the coolest number in Survivor. Um, and I, I think this game is so far from over. Um, we only have like three episodes left, but the, every single one is going to be madness. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to all that. I mean, I also want to say like on the voting blocks, um, not even voting blocks, but like voting draws, despite knowing what's going to happen for like living through the you know, live season, I'm always like, oh, 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 that's that, that person. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's my favorite part about this. Um, we filmed this like 18 months ago and I know what happens. Like I was there for all of it, but getting to like see it all unfold and being like, oh, that did happen. Or, yeah. like, I don't even know it because it was 18 months ago and, and we've done two more seasons since then. And um, it's, it's so cool and so much fun. And, I love this stuff. And if you have a college survivor at your college, do it. If you don't start one, um, this, this is the most unique and amazing thing you can do. All right. So as we conclude this episode, I want to hear from Andrew as your first time on the stream from, from what you've seen so far, we, we are at a final seven. Who, who are you looking for as your winner pick going into these last three episodes? Oh, God. Um, I, I think there's so many ways I could answer this question. Um, I mean, the the viewer, the core viewer in me, like, loves Heidi, and I'm always a sucker for the, um, not necessarily the person that's calling all the shots, but the person who really has a good view on the game and understands where they are. So for me, like, I saw Heidi whip out that, that sheet of paper, episode one, and she was logging everything, and I totally <laughs> respected that. I was like, let's go. I love that. Um, so uh, definitely rooting for Heidi. Um, also, I mean, Matt would be a great underdog story. Not for anything, if you can go into literally half the travels you go into with your name being written down, uh, and like literally all of your alliances ending, um, <laughs> that's something to be said about that. So um, I would say that's kind of what I'm leaning towards personally. But I hope they all achieve success in their own special way. <laughs> well, what you, you mentioned um, Matt and the the idea that he's he's losing all of these alliances. If you ha if you have no friends left in the game, that means they're on the jury, so that that's a huge boost. Yeah, right? yeah. it's it's it wild. It pays off to have no friends left because they'll vote for you at the end. So I I don't think I I understand how people are like having clear paths and like ideas of who should win given the edits, but anyone can win because there's so many things left to do in this game. Where um. That's five of the people that are still in the game are going to have to vote for two of them to win. So it's, it's madness to, to come. I, I just, yeah, no, like this season is shaping up to be absolutely wild. Like I love everyone and everyone, like every character that they're like playing. Cause I remember like before, like last episode, I was like looking at Matt. I was like, Oh, what, like Matt's just doing whatever. And like just him sitting on the uh, picnic table, like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, doing this. And I was like, I don't know why, but I love it. Like I am here for it. I as love much as Matt oh. picnic table confessionals, but yeah, Andrew, go. Yeah, the Matt uh, Matt confessionals are fantastic. But I think one of the really cool things about College Survivor is that you know, however you end up there on day one, everyone's just kind of like awkward, like ooh, I don't know, like I guess we're doing this in Cold Survivor. I mean, uh. Bijan has the classic joke of like, what are we gonna do? Like live in a tent in the woods or whatever. So like whatever. So like. But how quickly that turns into like strategizing late at night or searching campus at 2 a.m. for an idol. Like it's absurd. And I, I mean, I've toured UConn. It's a big campus. <laughs> it's a big freaking campus. So, you know, I have so much respect for people that play this game and like go balls to the wall and do everything they can to survive because it's a lot. 
That's so funny of you to mention because I know you're from you're you're at Northeastern and and in the city you guys don't have much campus. I know there's a bunch of buildings all over the place, but we've had people from from Michigan on the show and from Maryland, and their campuses are like twice the size of ours. Okay, to put it in perspective, my college is known as like the only college in Boston that has a campus, um, because we have two quads. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, so if, if that's not telling, uh. It, so yes, in my world, you know, uh, UConn's absolutely huge. But if you're in Rhode Island, you think Connecticut's huge. So exactly, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where it's uh, it's all a matter of perspective. All a matter of perspective, exactly. All right. Well, I think that gets us through tonight's episode. So thank you guys for watching. We're just gonna go through. Um, we'll go through everyone. If you guys have anything to promote or talk about, uh, we can do that briefly. Otherwise, you can just sign off. But uh, let's start with Eric. I'm going to give you the, the 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 big screen. Let's go, big time. Let's ride. All right, people. Remember, in the game of Survivor, don't don't be the sheep. Don't be the don't be the shark. Don't be the snake. Got to be the moose. Everyone follow, I mean, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nature Walks with Eric. Love you all. Soup doop, baby. Have a good night. <laughs> Soup doop, baby. Thank you. Uh, great channel. Some great podcasts and Nature Walks there. A very uh, I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, call them I, great. I, I, I feel like the podcasts especially are a fever dream every time I, I check in. I don't... They, they are I'll, something. I'll listen to them sober and end up not sober just listening to them. It's it's <laughs> an experience. <laughs> so fun. All right. Let's get to Andrew. Hi, y'all. Um, yeah, so I'm from Survive Northeastern. We are currently airing season three, Centennial Clash. So if you are jonesing for some more called Survivor, you can go on Survive Northeastern YouTube. Um, also, I am a comic in Boston. So I do improv and stand up around the city. So if you want more information, you can go to No Jokes Improv at Northeastern on Facebook or find me on Instagram, uh, Andrew T. Carlson. All right, that's awesome. The improv, that's really cool. I know, I'm going to be going into the city and watching Andrew. That, <laughs> ooh, and do you know what? That's what everyone tells me. Wow, you do improv. That is so cool. I don't know, I don't know <laughs> that's what, what everyone say. says. I don't know what else to say. I'd, I'd, have, to, I'd have to see it. I got, I got, you got to prove it to me. You seem like a funny guy. Not Deal. Funny. I appreciate I'm that a lot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, absolutely check out Survivor Northeastern. Uh, just throw it in YouTube. Another college Survivor to watch, and I'm sure it is a good one. And there's Nature Walks with Eric. In the there, he is. there he is. Um, All right, my, my part of the week. Um, I'm just. I'll just. I'm just going to talk about College Survivor. Um, the community that it is is it's insane. How how cool this stuff is. It's it's us just being nerds, but it's us making these amazing connections with people all across the country. If you don't, again, like I said, if you don't have a college survivor, look into making one. It's we just threw shit together, and it's been the time of our lives. And if there is one, apply, apply, play, play. Look into orgs like this. This whole community is one of the coolest things that I've ever gotten to be a part of, and I'm I'm really grateful to, for it. So. I will encourage anyone who is interested to get into it and welcome everyone with open arms by all means. All right. Thank you, Ethan. And just to conclude, my plug for the week is uh, I just want to plug our editor. Shout out to Cooper. I, I think going into this episode, this was maybe maybe one of my, my least favorite parts of the season because it's just like Red's getting picked off but it ended up being one of my favorite episodes of the season, I really think, because it was just really well edited, and there were a lot of funny moments in it. So shout out to Cooper. He makes this really great. And, uh, I mean, I edited season one, and that was really tough for me. And uh, I know all the work that goes into it and for anyone editing a season. So Cooper's doing a great job, so I'm happy about that. But, uh, yeah, um, other than that, that is going to be it for our live show tonight. Thank you, uh Ethan, as always, uh, the Moose, Eric DeWitt, for coming by. And, of course, Andrew from Survivor Northeastern. It was great having you. Thank you for coming on the live show. We love our community members. But uh, if you guys have 
Um, definitely follow us on social media, uh, Instagram at survivor.yukon, Twitter at survivor uh, We have our website and descriptions. Uh, we have a Facebook page, survivor Yukon. Just type that in. That'll come up. Those are all the places you can find us and, uh, look for the next three episodes. Um, the season only gets better from here. There's some amazing episodes. I think this the next episode is awesome. And, but the net, the last two episodes of the season are some of the best college survivor around. I think they'll, they'll be really great. The, the, fi- the final Beautiful. six. So we have the final seven episode next week, final six after that. And then I think we'll have a gap before the finale, which will be a three boot finale again, just like season one. So Look forward to that. Um, look forward to the end of this great season. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and we will catch you next week. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Peace Bye. out. Bye.